So theorem 8.9 tells me that if one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are both congruent and parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So I see this. If I have a quadrilateral and I see that one pair of sides is both parallel and congruent, then I know that this shape is a parallelogram. The reason for that is because if we drew a line, since we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, that would make angle one and angle two congruent since they're alternate interior angles. The shared side BD is congruent, reflexive property. Thus, our triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. So if I wanted to write that out, I would get that AB is parallel to CD and AB is congruent to CD. That is given. I then know that BD is congruent to BD by reflexive property. This means that angle one is congruent to angle two by the alternate interior angle theorem. Then let's move up here. Triangle A, B, D is congruent to triangle C, D, B. And that is by side, angle, side. Which means that angles three and four are congruent. Angle three is congruent to angle four. And that is by C, P, C, T, C. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. If 3 and 4 are congruent, then side BC is parallel to side AD. Because we have our converse to the alternate interior angle theorem. And so we see that ABCD is a parallelogram. And that is the definition of a parallelogram. Okay, last theorem. Yep. And the last theorem is this. If the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Meaning, if I have a quadrilateral with its two diagonals such that A E is congruent to E C and B E is congruent to E D, then my quadrilateral must be a parallelogram. And I'll leave that for you to fiddle with the proof if you want to. Um, here's a little hint. Prove these two triangles congruent first. Then you can prove these two. Okay. This brings us to our summary of ways to prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram.